Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. And a uh, big congratulations to everyone who were at the awards last night and are uh, here this morning. I heard it was an incredible evening. So uh, again, congratulations to all the winners of those awards last night and congratulations again to the AHA for putting on a very, very good show. I'd also like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on land we meet today, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Michael Johnson, the CEO of Accommodation Australia, Mr Bradley Woods, who just spoke, CEO, of course, of um, AHAWA, Carolyn Turbull, the Managing Director of Tourism WA, and Mr Gareth Martin, CEO of Business Events Australia, and, of course, Adrian Cardossal, who um, introduced me earlier before. Look, it is a great pleasure to be here this morning um, to speak at this conference and to discuss the government strategy um, in relation to the tourism industry in WA. But first of all, I would like to acknowledge all the work um, that has been done by the tourism operators in this room. As you all would be aware, it ha has been a series of challenges in particular over the past five years, navigating different circumstances and situations that you could never have predicted and that we could never have anticipated. So a big thanks to all the tourism operators, all of those who have been at, um, at the front line making sure that our tourism industry was sustainable and continues to thrive. I'd also like to acknowledge Bradley and the whole team at AHA. Um, they are a productive group who are very proactive and positive about our industry. And I think that's really a, a, a great organisation that's positive about the future. But is also at our door on any given day to make sure they're lobbying for the industry. And I, I again, thanks Bradley and the whole team for their very, very productive, proactive and positive relationship with government and making sure that we're aware of all the challenges and but also that the dialogue is a positive one and one that helps promote the industry. I think Bradley touched upon it. I know you had, there are many challenges that exist in the industry, in particular when we look at workforce and also some of the issues that the re strong resources sector bring to tourism. We're very lucky in the state that we have such a booming um, resources industry, but of course it has impacts in relation to tourism, in many instances sometimes crowding out um, some of the activity that can happen in the tourism um, industry. So managing tourism in WA is a challenging one in particular because of what we have is a very, very strong economy, um, but also we have those challenges as Bradley outlined in relation to uh, workforce and also some of the volatility in our occupation or volatility in our tourism numbers and there will be things that I want to talk about today. Now, as is Bradley highlighted, our economy is going very, very well. Um, I was briefed yesterday by the Treasury crew about all the economic indicators and across the board, we have very, very strong economic activity in WA. A very strong um, state domestic economy, strong business investment, strong um, government investment. Importantly, for an industry like the tourism sector, we still have good consumer spending. And our cons um, consumer spending is about double the rate of uh, the growth in consumer spending, is double the rate from the other states. So we have a lot of confidence in WA and one of the key features of WA has been in the past year strong population growth. 94,000 people came to WA last year, the biggest number on record, a population growth of 3.3 per cent, again the strongest of all the states. So that is uh, in creating a lot of challenges but it does help support demand and consumption in the WA economy. The tourism industry itself and I think my colleague, Paul Papalia, the former tourism minister, and a former tourism minister that wishes he was still tourism minister, I suspect. Um, I think I spoke last night about some of the strength in the tourism industry and the fact that in the year ending December 23, the state achieved a record visitor spend of 17.7 billion, and that is bigger than when he was tourism minister in 2019. Um, so we've seen some very, very good rebound growth from COVID and we continue to work with industry to support that visitor spend, those visitor um, numbers. From a government point of view, the tourism industry is a key part of our strategy to diversify the str and strengthen the WA economy. Uh, the tourism industry is such a big employer 
It plays such a key role in our economic growth. And we want to continue to support the tourism in industry across the state. Not only to make sure that well, we have a very diversified economy, but to give Western Australian choices in the industry and career paths that they want to uh, pursue. And we see hospitality in the tourism industry as a key place for young people, older people, to gain meaningful long-term employment. Um, in relation to our um, priority given to tourism, what we've seen and what we'll continue to see through this budget is additional funding in the budget to support tourism, whether it be events, whether it be marketing, whether it be attracting more direct flights. And we have a record spend in the tourism budget and again, in the upcoming budget, you'll see more news and more new initiatives when it comes to tourism in WA. Uh, we've committed over half a billion dollars to tourism over the next four years and as I said there'll be other initiatives that we announce as part of the budget. But it is a very much a key priority and one that we're focusing on growing. As Tourism Minister, um, as I outlined in other um, speeches and in, uh, in other places, I've said about three key priorities that we're focusing on. That is events, it's direct flights and it's tourism infrastructure. Um, and I know many of you in the event um, as accommodation providers understand the role that events can play to the accommodation market. We have an ambition to be the fastest growing events destination in the Southeast Asia re region. I think the term is the always on strategy and another term I like to uh, provide is that every month, every season there's a reason to visit WA. And so events is a core plank of what we want to do um, to make sure that we give people a reason to WA. We know events done well can attract thousands of people from interstate and, over, uh, and overseas, and that has such a big impact on your occupancy and also what we can do in relation to the activity and um, the vibrancy of our city and our suburbs. So we've seen some very good success over the past uh, year. We've seen, of course, the impact the Coldplay concerts had in WA, the WWE Elimination Chamber, and I said I never thought I'd become an expert on wrestling, but I did over those five days. Um, highly successful, UFC, of course, last year, another example, highly successful, where we're bringing people to WA who would normally not come here. And I think, coupled with business events, these events, what they do is they allow, they give people a reason to come to WA. And when they come to WA, they like what they see. And I um, remember being hanging out outside the uh, superstore of WWE, uh, the merchandise store in Forest Chase, talking to some of the visitors who had come from interstate. And it was a really a great conversation, asking, what are you, you know, what's your impression? Oh, we love it. Oh, look, we wouldn't have come here, but it was WWE that brought us here. So it's bring, giving people, people that reason to, to visit WA. And we're very much focused on that event strategy. Three key plants, that is the blockbuster events, and they're the ones like the WWE, it's like um, UFC, it's like um, Coldplay, where we're um, grabbing events that are out there to try and make sure we put WA on the map. Then there's the homegrown calendar of events, and something I'm very working very closely with Tourism WA, but also across government, is how do we continue to grow those homegrown events? And the idea is to have a full calendar 12 months worth of events, and over time they grow to get their own momentum. And we've seen that done successfully in other states, and we're very keen to, in a, state, in a, state, in a way, replicate it, but bring that WA um, aspect to these events. And it may be in the art sector, it may be in the sports sector, it may be in horse racing. It's looking across, gov across government, across the community, on how we can build those homegrown events. And the third, of course, is business events because, again, they are a key, key attractor of visitors and then repeat, repeat visitors. And again, I think all the stats show that people that come for vi um, business events normally come back and bring their family and they, again, give, w give us the opportunity to show visitors just how great WA is. So as I said, within relation to blockbuster events, we've got a lot coming up um, um, across Across uh, the uh, across the fields, we've got, of course, we've got boxing on the on May the 12th. Um, we've got UFC back in August. 
We've got international rugby, and we do have, for the first time, two Italian City A teams playing in Perth on May the 31st. In relation to May 31st, um, what we're doing is focusing on a week-long um, event, and this is something that we want to do more through tourism, is um, create a activation team that looks at when these events come to WA, how can we create an active vibrancy across the city. So not only um, maybe some flags down St George's Terrace, but actually community events and try and engage the local community. Um, and again, make sure that the event spills out of the location where it's held. So whether it be at HBF Park, whether it be Optus Stadium, uh, whether it be uh, the arena, or wherever it is that that the event spills out into the community. And we've done that in, in part in some instances. And what we saw with WWE, I've got to say, is they, they are a big professional unit and they activated Carousel Shopping Centre, they activated the entire city and suburbs. And we want to do that for all of the major events that we bring. So that is about how we organise ourselves as government and how we work with community and how we work with the industry on how we can get a widespread impact. So that might mean someone may not be going to the event, but they might go to the local pub or to the local um, uh, restaurant and be part of a festival, be part of something that's bigger than just the event. So that's something we're very much focusing in relation to the Italian game and then using that model to move forward for other events. So we're very keen to work with industry on that. As I said, the homegrown calendar is something we're working on. If you look across the year, there are many different events in Western Australia that are very good, but it's about then coupling that with the marketing and the activation strategy to create events that people will come over for. I give this example, and it's you know, my little personal anecdote, that uh, when I was in my 20s, I'd go to Melbourne every year for the comedy festival because I like comedy. I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Instead, I became a politician. But anyway, um, so I used to go each year to the comedy festival. And it was just something that I used to go to. And it wasn't you know, a blockbuster event, but it made me, gave me the reason to go. I enjoyed the week. So it's about making, look at these homegrown events throughout the year and how we can elevate them, how we can have international partnerships. And um, there are so many things that we can do to support our homegrown events, and that's something we're very much keen on working on. And of course, um, the, other, uh, the other key part of events, of course, is regional events, and they are a big part of our focus. And when we look at the calendar of events, highlighting that we have some very, very iconic regional events that, again, with future support and future work with airlines, with the um, industry, that we can continue to support and grow. And then we have a regional events program that we continue to support regional events. And of course, currently we've got the iconic Mar Margaret River Pro down um, in the southwest. It's not only those blockbuster events in regional WA, but it's also how we can continue to support those regional events and really make sure they become a key feature of our calendar. As I said, business events, um, Perth, very much um, keen on how we continue to support business events. We've got some significant events coming um, in WA under the business events um, sort of banner. We're hosting the World Travel and Tourism Council's Global Summit this October, the largest conference of its kind in the world. We're very excited by that. And again, it's how we can activate our city um, around that event too to make sure those attendees can experience more than just the business event, but what's happening around Perth. In March 2025, we'll host the Roots Asia 2025 in collaboration with Perth Airport, and then the prestigious 2025 Virtuoso Forum Australia New Zealand, which again offers a platform for local tourism operators to showcase our offerings to a global audience. In this context, it is important to note the Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre and our commitment to upgrade and revitalise that centre. We know that uh, we are constantly competing with other states and other destinations around the world in relation to facilities. And we understand that the Convention Centre needs an overhaul and that's why we're working to um, achieve that. Uh, we're going through that process now in the planning process and we're very committed to have an upgraded uh, Convention Centre to make sure that WA can continue to compete with other parts of Australia and the world to attract those business events. 
Another key plank, of course, is aviation. That is making sure that we reconnect to the rest of the world. And again, a record, there was a $75 million fund allocated for aviation recovery, and we're seeing um, a bounce back in this front, on this front. Our aviation numbers um, in 2024 have been strong. Perth Airport clocking its busiest month on record in January with 1.39 million passengers. And again, we're working really hard to reconnect WA. We've got new or uh, reconnected non-stop flights with 19 global destinations, including Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Jakarta, Johannesburg, London, um, we've got Paris, to Rome and Tokyo. Again, making sure that we continue our work to reconnect WA to the rest of the world. It has been a challenge, and I thank everyone from the Tourism WA team, because as we know, uh, it, International airlines have issues with staff and also aircraft availability. So we're again, we're competing with many other places, other destinations to secure new routes. But we continue to work to do that. Of course, I visited both uh, India and China earlier this year to again put forward our proposal to have uh, direct flights. I, I flew on the, uh, very, the, the temporary direct flight to Shanghai and that flight did well, but we continue to work with Chinese airlines to have a new direct route and hopefully will be successful very soon. India is a tougher market to crack. The demand for new flights and can into India uh, from everywhere and everyone sees India as a very, very prospective tourism market because of the very growing middle class and the very significant middle class and their propensity to travel. So we are um, competing on that front but we continue to do what we can to support those Indian connections and of course we've got the first test this year um, with India and so we're again looking at how we can support uh, the Indian market through our, our love of cricket but also our ability to then market ourselves to um, Indian travellers, and not only Indian travellers from India, but also through Southeast Asia, through Singapore and other areas where they have a strong Indian population. So again, um, within WA, we continue to support the regional airfares. Um, we have the affordable regional airfares program for the sixth consecutive year. We have had discounted fares to the Kimberley, and of course, we celebrate the launch of the first Sydney to Bustleton non-stop service, um, last uh, last month, and the new Singapore to Broome non-stop service is also being launched in June this year. So we continue to look at how we can connect uh, visitors, not only to Perth but into regional WA um, through the uh, through air travel and working with the airlines as much as we can. Um, another key component is infrastructure and. As Minister for Transport, I very much understand the role that infrastructure plays for tourists and I think as we continue to move forward, my very strong view is a city that can move tourists easily around will always have a competitive advantage. And WA already um, is very, very easy to move around but we continue to support new measures to support the movement of people. As I said, when it comes to uh, air travel, we've got our schemes targeted to tourists. We also have an affordable airfare scheme for regional residents and that's about supporting people living and working in regional WA but it's also about continuing to expand and support capacity in uh, flights within regional WA. I think there's a, a, we're still a little bit immature in relation to our market and we need to continue to support more flights, more accessibility around regional WA. From a road perspective, we're spending a record amount on roads and we could only see the impact that when the Fitzroy River Bridge went out, the impact it had on regional tourism uh, plus the rest of the economy. So having a commitment to regional roads, better rest areas, better support for those driving a, around our great state is another focus and again, our record spending in regional roads also support that. And other initiatives like our rail line to the airport, um, which is again something that when I visited Melbourne recently they were very envious of that again tourism infrastructure that will continue to be more popular and gain momentum over many years. So as I said, as Transport Minister, very aware of it and we're looking at our public transport system, we'll be moving to 
uh, being able to move around on our public transport system just with your credit card, not the smart, not the smart rider, which again is uh, something that helps people move around our, cis our cities and of course free the free cat services and a lot of our expanded rail networks again will help people move around. Um, when it comes to tourism investment, a couple of key initiatives that we've got underway. One of them is regulatory reform. Um, so through the uh, regulatory reform package we're working on across government through the Premier's uh, role of state development. We're looking at how we can continue to reform regulations to support investment in WA. Now again, tourism I know has uh, battled um, in this area, or tourism product has battled in this area. And as I've said on many occasions, sometimes getting a small or relatively small $10 million tourism product uh, investment you're competing with a $5 billion resource investment. Um, and so what we're doing is creating a new pathway to support tourism investment, that tourism um, investment can be classified as a significant project and that we can actually really make sure that we can get some better streamlining the approvals. <coughs> We've appointed a coordinator general in the Department of State Development that will help support these types of projects and to try and make sure we reduce red tape where we, can, where, where we can to support new investment. We've also created a new tourism subcommittee of cabinet with a range of ministers, myself, the Minister for Lands, the Minister for the Environment, the Minister for Regional Development. That sub subcommittee is looking at how we can ensure that we give priority and focus to new tourism product and tourism investment in Western Australia. Now we have, um, and I think the previous tourism minister, the now Premier, um, very much uh, made this point in many instances. A lot of the tourism product um, is in government owned land, whether it be held by Crown land or through the environmental agencies. So for us to continue to grow those tourism experiences, it's how we can work together as a government and not have a siloed approach to how we manage our assets around the state. So uh, we're working very closely. In particular, we know with national parks, which can be of so much benefit, but we need to have accessibility and good infrastructure to make them work. When I look at the maritime infrastructure around the state, there's a lot of work to be done to make sure we continue to enhance the, um, the maritime experience, have the jetties, have the facilities to support uh, the, tourism infrastructure, the tourism product. So we're very much working on that and there's a, a lot of being work done by the Tourism Commission, um, WA Tourism too. In particular, accommodation studies through Broome and Exmouth, working with local councils where we can to identify new opportunities and also rolling out particular program, programs like camping with custodians across the state. Um, the other point I'll make is some of the investment that we're making in this tourism product through government agencies. In January, I, with um, Minister for the Environment, Reese Whitby, I announced 26 million to be invested in a number of key uh, destinations across WA, Karajini, the Southwest Cape to Cape, Rottnest, a number of other places. We're also looking at making further investment, and I'd say keep um, looking out for this budget on keeping, um, sorry, investing more in those tourism facilities around the state to support in particular regional tourism and people being able to move around the state and experience our great out outdoors. Of course, um, the, the airport debate between Quant Qantas and Perth Airport continues. I don't have an update because every time I ask for an update and not much changes, but that continues to happen in relation to the co-location of the terminals in, um, uh, at Perth. And before finishing, I just want to touch upon the workforce issue, which um, Bradley touched upon, and it's one area where we're working very closely with the AHA. And we understand that uh, having people to deliver your services, to help deliver work in the industry is very, very import important. We committed $4 million to address the skill shortage and um, cultivate future talent. Like I said, in collaboration with AHA, we delivered the brand new bespoke tourism and hospitality employment website, westernstrada.jobs. And since its launch in May 2022, the site has connected nearly 10,000 job seekers to over 870 industry employers and over 1,000 job listings. 
We continue to engage both for young people wanting a career and also mature age people wanting to get back into the workforce. They're two areas we're concentrating on and working with the AHA in delivering um, tourism uh, product, uh, sorry, training product to encourage people to get back into the tourism industry. And we're working through the federal government's Choose Tourism Grant Program and a new paid campaign and content partnership with Perth is OK. We understand the challenges that are there and we really want to try and develop and grow our home t homegrown talent to work in our tours, our hotels, in our campsites, in all of our hospitality and it's very much a focus on, on for us and in respect to training, we're making a massive effort in training to train young Western Australians to stay in WA and to work in WA. Thank you very much. That's a quick snapshot of what we've been up to. It is an exciting time in WA. Uh, as Treasurer, it's an um, exciting time. There are enormous demands, but there's no better other place in the world I'd rather be. And we continue to work with your industry. We very much appreciate what you do. It's an exciting industry. It's a positive industry. And it is an industry that we can continue to grow. And that's what's so exciting, exciting by it. It's not an industry in decline. It's an, an industry that's actually on a significant, significant growth path. And I'm very excited to be your minister and also to work with you to deliver an exceptional WA product. Thank you.